Hey guys, Dr. Isabella Wentz here. I'm the New York Times bestselling author of Hashimoto's The Root Cause and a new book called Hashimoto's Protocol and I'm also the creator of The Thyroid Secrets. I'm so excited to have you all here tonight with me. We're going to be talking about the top five takeaways from The Thyroid Secret Episode 1. I hope that you can join me live and I just want to do a little bit of a sound check. If you can hear me, can you like this, com can you like this post for me please? So can you hit the like button? or hit the heart button on your computer. Um, also, I'd love to know where you're dialing in from. If you could write in your name as well as your city, and we'll get started in right away. So, okay, I see some people are liking this post, so great, so it looks like you can hear me. And I would love to hear from you. So, today, we're gonna be giving you the top five takeaways from the Thyroid Secret. If you didn't know, today is the first day of the world premiere of the Thyroid Secret. So episode one just went live about two hours ago and I hope that you guys have had a chance to tune into that. If you haven't, make sure that you register. So in the description of this post, I have a link for you where you can register to watch the Thyroid Secret for free from March 1st to March 9th. If you have anybody that you know that has thyroid disease and would really benefit from this information, please go ahead and share this post on your timeline as well. We're trying to reach as many people as possible with thyroid disease with this free series. This series is meant to give you your health back if you've been diagnosed with a thyroid condition. So, I have Sarah from Alabama. Hi Sarah. Andrea, or Andrea from Philadelphia, hello. Um, Huiz from Florida, what a great name. Noel from New York City, and that's Marta. Barb McKinley from Omaha, Nebraska, hello Barb. And then another Barb from BC, Canada. Great, you guys, so go ahead and keep um, sending me the likes and putting in comments. I'm gonna go through some of the top takeaways from the thyroid secret today. And we're also going to be taking your, I'm, I'm going to be taking all of your questions live. I'm going to try to answer as many as possible in the next hour. So go ahead and add in your questions for me. Um, I'd love to also hear where you're coming from. So Katie from Alabama. Hello, Katie. Vicki from North Carolina. We've got um, Toronto in the house. Hello, Christian. Gabby. How are you doing, Gabby? Gabby's from Arizona. We have Melanie from New Hampshire, awesome. It looks like we've got people from all over the country and even from Canada coming with us tonight. So, if you haven't registered for the Thyroid Secret, there's a, a link for you to do so in the description of this. And um, I wanted to talk about what's coming first before we get into the top takeaways. So the Thyroid Secret is a documentary series that I created over the last year. We have nine free episodes that are gonna go out March 1st through the 9th and the things that we're gonna be covering. So the first episode that just aired today, we're gonna to be covering my stories, patient stories, and how you can really tell if you have thyroid disease. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be talking about some of the common misdiagnoses and how the thyroid can affect the brain. So we're gonna be addressing symptoms like anxiety, depression, that may be thyroid related, but your doctor may not know about it. And there are simple solutions for how you can recover from those. We're gonna be talking about innovative therapies from hormones to lasers to, um, to compounded medications as well as some other things that um, there are really brand new in episode three. Episode four, we're gonna start digging into why thyroid disease happens. So we're gonna talk about toxins, how they can trigger thyroid disease, where they come from, how you can get rid of them. In episode five, we're gonna talk about some of the most important nutritional interventions. Nutrition is one of the keys to thriving with thyroid disease as well as recovering your health. And it's not the kind of nutrition that most doctors talk about. Stress response. So we're gonna be talking about stress response in episode six. So um, what does exercise have to do with thyroid disease? What does stress have to do with it? We're gonna have some exciting cameos from YouTube and Instagram stars as well. Episode seven is gonna go into special topics. So fertility, if you know anybody that has um, become pregnant and developed strange symptoms after, anybody that's trying to become pregnant or is pregnant, this is a very key episode. Thyroid disease affects so many women and especially women of childbearing age and the consequences can be devastating. So we have a whole entire episode, especially on that. We're gonna talk about um, getting to the root of the root. So in episode eight, we talk about the gut health as a root cause of thyroid disease, as well as some chronic infections. And we've got some world-class innovative experts that are gonna be sharing the path to recovering from thyroid disease. And episode nine is um, probably by far my favorite because it features healing stories from 
people from around the country. Um, I traveled around the country to film this documentary series. We recorded over 100 experts and over 60 patients who've been able to recover their health. So I hope that you tune in for that again. Um, and again, the, the link to register for that for free is in the description of this. And if you guys could kindly share this uh, video on your timeline so that we could get more people registered to get this life-saving information to them. So um, one quick housekeeping announcement. Some of you guys um, that are part of my community, you guys uh, had a chance to be in part of the, the sneak peek of the thyroid secret. We had about 100,000 people join us for that. And we've taken all of your suggestions to heart and we've made all these wonderful improvements for this new release. One of the things that um, we offer during the soft launch of the thyroid secret were um, DVD sets. And so you guys, if you look behind me, you'll see a lovely DVD set um, that is next to my book, Hashimoto's Protocol and the Root Cause. And this is something that you'll start receiving um, soon. So we just had them all printed and our team has been working behind the scenes really, really hard to make sure that it's coming out beautiful and high quality. And this is gonna start shipping on the 8th. Some of you guys may have re already received messages about that. So, so look, look for it in your mailboxes starting next week. All right, so we've got Gail from Jamaica. I love Jamaica. That's where um, my husband and I got married, actually. We have Linda. Linda's um, confused with the elimination diet in my book, so she needs help. Linda, um, the elimination diet goes through what are the things that you need to get rid of for a time period to figure out what your food sensitivities are. And so we go through um, three weeks where we get rid of the common most reactive foods. We're gonna learn more about these foods in episode five, um, but real quick, they're gluten, dairy, soy, eggs, and grains for most people. Those are gonna be the top five reactive foods for people with thyroid disease. So I hopefully that helps. And um, Kate from Australia is saying hello. Uh, Carrie says, way to go Isabella, you rock. Thank you so much, Carrie, you rock. Jennifer from Illinois, so um, I'm from Illinois too. That's wonderful, hello, hello. Long Beach, California. How you doing, Lore? Chariti from Central Florida. Courtney from Nevada. Marie from Ottawa. Wonderful. Sarah from Oregon. Hello, Sarah. And Sharon from Australia. Hello, Sharon. Thanks for joining us. Um, Sharon says, I always feel hot. Is that normal? So the thyroid gland controls our metabolism. And part of metabolism is controlling our body temperature. So I, I like to think of the thyroid gland as sort of our thermometer. Now, if you are always hot or always cold, that usually means that your thermometer or your thyroid gland is not working correctly. So that's, that could be a symptom of thyroid disease for sure. And then, um, let's see here. And Tucson, hello Nicole. And then Sherry says hello from Ohio. Hello Sherry. Rachel says, is, oh no, I missed it. Is there an episode one replay? Actually, thanks for asking Rachel. So episode one will be available for the next um, 22 hours. If you guys haven't registered, go ahead and register. The link to register for the thyroid secrets is in this description here. So going through and recording the thyroid secret was quite a journey and I hope that you really, really enjoy this series. I wanna talk about some of the top five takeaways from episode one. I don't know if you haven't had a chance to dial in, again, it's gonna be available for the next 22 hours, so make sure you go ahead and register and watch it. We're gonna be sending you the links to watch it in your email, so be sure to look out for that. So takeaway one, the symptoms can vary depending on the person. Thyroid disease, um, you know, some of the myths out there are that thyroid disease is, is not really a big deal and that you can just take thyroid hormone for it. But that's not necessarily the case because thyroid disease is more than just a sluggish thyroid. And hormones address the underactive thyroid component, but they do not address what else is going on with the body. Additionally, the prescribed hormones today um, Synthroid was the number one prescribed drug in two of the last three years. They oftentimes do not address all of the symptoms. Um, part of the reason for that is because Synthroid contains something known as T4. This is one of the thyroid hormones that's made by the thyroid gland. Now the thyroid gland also makes three other 
um, thyroid hormones, T1, T2, T3, and T4. T3 is the most active hormone, and T4 under normal circumstances should convert to T3 just fine, but in some cases it doesn't. Um, research will say that anywhere from 10 to 20% of people just do not convert T4 to T3 properly. Um, what I found as a pharmacist, as a thyroid pharmacist, it's probably the reverse. About 80% of people who take synthetic thyroid hormones still continue to struggle with symptoms and they're depressed and they're brain fogged and they can't lose weight, they're losing their hair, they're cold all the time um, and their doctors just kind of tell them that it's either in their head or that they need antidepressants, that they need to eat less and exercise. So that's the, one of the top takeaways I hope that you guys get from episode one of The Thyroid Secret. Um, if you guys are watching this and if you're just joining us, we're talking about the top five takeaways from the thyroid secret and I'm answering your questions live. If you um, are watching this, I would love it if you could share this to your timeline so anybody that you know with thyroid disease may be able to benefit from this information too. Lori says, I wish it wasn't so hard to lose weight. Um, Lori, one of the reasons why people with thyroid disease have such a hard time with losing weight is actually because... Um, thyroid hormone prescriptions are not being utilized properly and so oftentimes when we give a person a combination of, of the active thyroid hormone T3 with the T4 such as in natural desiccated thyroid or in compounded T4 T3 medications we see that people's weight tends to change and even without changing anything else we cover a lot of weight related issues and how to address them in, in episode six. So you'll have more information on that there and I highly recommend that you, that you check in. Um, Andrea wants to know, can you have antibodies and not have Hashimoto's? So this is a really great question, Andrea, and kind of leads to um, one of the next segues of what thyroid disease really is. And um, thyroid antibodies, these are these are markers that there's something going on within our body, that our body is out of balance and that our immune system is attacking our thyroid glands. Now, in most cases, if you do have thyroid antibodies, it means that you either have Graves' disease, which is um, an autoimmune thyroid condition that eventually results in an overactive thyroid, that you either have Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune condition that affects the thyroid gland that eventually results in an underactive thyroid, or that you have thyroid cancer. And so all of these potential um, conditions may be related to thyroid antibodies, and it's very, very wise to test for them. The next kind of question is um, about what thyroid disease and what thyroid disease isn't. So a lot of times people say, okay, well, you just have a sluggish thyroid, and there's all there is to it. You just have to take some thyroid medications. Well, it's not that simple. Thyroid conditions are usually caused by an immune system that's out of balance. And so this immune system that's out of balance for whatever reason, and we actually get into the reasons in Thyroid Secret, um, starts to recognize the thyroid gland as a foreign invader and starts to launch an attack on the thyroid gland. Now, when this happens for enough time, usually a few years, the thyroid gland will be destroyed, sometimes completely destroyed, and the thyroid gland can no longer make sufficient thyroid hormone. It's really important to uncover these antibodies early so you could prevent the damage to your thyroid gland. If you already have damage to your thyroid gland, if you're already taking thyroid hormones, if you've already had your thyroid gland removed, um, that doesn't mean that you can't do anything about it. So one of the key things is making sure that you're on the right type of thyroid hormone and another thing is making sure that you're figuring out what the underlying cause was of what led to your condition. Because a lot of times, unfortunately, thyroid disease is sort of the first thing that happens. The thyroid gland is sort of the canary in the coal mine, and thyroid gland is the first gland that gets affected by autoimmunity or even, um, in some cases, by cancer. And so what happens, for example, with autoimmunity, the immune system attacks the thyroid gland and eventually, once the thyroid gland is destroyed, um, the immune system might start attacking another part of the body. And so it's not uncommon to see people who are diagnosed with Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, Graves' hyperthyroidism, or even um, thyroid cancer, and they get their thyroid gland um, removed, medicated, or radiated, and then they end up with another type of autoimmune condition, multiple sclerosis, 
lupus, um, Sjogren's, I've seen quite a few different conditions develop a few years down the road because the, the root cause was not addressed. And there's still this imbalance in the body that's causing the thyroid gland to attack the immune system. So let's see, let's go to some of the questions here. And if you guys are watching this, if you can please hit like. If you could um, give me some comments, hit love and share this on your timeline so that more people can benefit. Um, Theodora says, I am hypo and I have chronic sinus issues. Are they related to this disease? Theodora, absolutely. So in episode four, we cover mold toxicity, which is a common root cause of both sinus issues as well as thyroid disease. And so um, some people have been able to get their thyroid conditions into remission by addressing, and of course their sinus issues as well, by addressing mold toxicity in their home or in their bodies. And you know, just to bust a myth real quick, it doesn't have to be um, like heavy duty black mold. Some people are genetically more sensitive to mold, even, even to the amounts of mold that wouldn't affect most people, there's a percentage of us that are gonna be sensitive. And so I highly recommend that you check into episode four. Again, the link is in the description of this, um, of this post. Let's see, Raven says, um, Cheryl asks, do you speak of any of LDN in this series? We do, so we speak about low-dose naltrexone in actually episode three of the series. And we go through some of the case studies and we also go through the best practices. So Lotus naltrexone is a compounded medication that can be used for Hashimoto's, for Graves' disease, and it could be used for um, cancers as well. Now, this medication is, is different than most medications. As a pharmacist, I could tell you that a lot of the medications out there have significant side effects. Low-dose naltrexone has a very low side effect profile. Um, the key is using it correctly, and we dive deep into that in episode three, so I hope that you'll check in. Um, Emily says, if I've already had radioactive iodine, can I still see improvements to brain fog, irritability, to lose weight, exhaustion? Absolutely, Emily. So this is uh, part of the mission of the thyroid secret, is to show you the way to get rid of these symptoms and figure out the underlying imbalances in your body. So. Um, a lot of the things we found is a lot of times people who have had their thyroid glands removed or have had radioactive iodine, they actually may benefit from a combination of T4 and T3. Um, this is discussed in episode three. There are brain fog interventions you can do that were discussed in episode two. And then we discuss so many more of these things. Um, the episode six has a lot of information about fatigue as those episode five. So I hope that you'll take advantage of that and I hope that you'll um, get your health back because you're, you're worth it. And you know, there's, there's no need for you to be sick. Um, I forgot to tell you guys my story. So some of you have already been following me. Some of you are new and I'm welcome. Glad to have you here. So I'm a pharmacist by training and I wasn't always interested in the thyroid gland until I was diagnosed myself with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's in 2009. This was after almost a decade of some pretty debilitating symptoms, including fatigue, brain fog, panic attacks, irritability, carpal tunnel, joint pains, irritable bowel syndrome, acid reflux. You know, I just, I just went the whole nine yards. And I was taking multiple medications in my 20s. And um, when I got diagnosed with thyroid disease, I was at first very relieved because I thought, finally, I have an answer to all of my questions. And I got on thyroid hormone, but unfortunately, I was still struggling. I had hair loss, I had all these panic attacks, and my doctors were like, okay, well, let's give you antidepressants. Um, I think the hair, that's probably just because you're getting older. And I really wasn't getting a lot of help, and that's how I decided to become a thyroid expert slash human guinea pig. And I started discovering all these different things that can be done to address all of your symptoms and actually reduce or sometimes eliminate the autoimmune attack on your body. In some cases, um, some people are actually able to wean off of thyroid hormones too, which of course um, is not always the case, but it's very, very encouraging to know that there are lifestyle things you can do to recover your health. Um, Meredith asks, what are your recommendations for someone with Hashimoto's trying to get pregnant? Oh, Meredith, this is such a great question. So we know that when you have um, Hashimoto's, we have a higher risk of having pregnancy complications, miscarriages, and even having um, children born with developmental disabilities, but it doesn't have to be the case. 
It does not have to be the case. So episode seven is focused on everything that you need to do to prepare your body for pregnancy, to have a healthy pregnancy and thrive in the postpartum period so that you don't have postpartum depression, you don't get postpartum thyroid issues. Um, some of the things that can be helpful are gonna be selenium supplements and um, you know, really getting your nutrients in balance. Uh, perhaps doing some acupuncture and really I just hope that you tune into episode 7 because I've got some of my favorite ladies in the world that are talking about all the strategies for um, pregnancy and fertility so that we can save babies. So we've got Dana Trentini from Hypothyroid Mom, Mary Showman, we have um, Dr. Jolene Brighton, um, Krista Orecchio, so all of these fabulous ladies and experts, this is their life's work and I'm so excited to have them in episode seven just for you so that you can figure out exactly how to have a successful pregnancy, feel wonderful during your pregnancy, and have a healthy, beautiful baby. Um, Ashley says, I have elevated, elevated thyroid antibodies. Thyroid function is showing normal, but I have many symptoms. What other tests do you recommend? So Ashley, you're in the perfect place to address your thyroid condition because you can prevent the damage to your thyroid gland. So um, there are five stages to thyroid disease, um, hypothyroidism. Um, the first stage is basically just having the genetic predisposition. Most people have this. The second stage is gonna be an elevation in antibodies. This is where the symptoms start. Most conventional doctors will tell us that there's nothing that they can do. But from a functional medicine perspective and from a thyroid secret perspective and a root cause perspective, this is the best time to act to prevent damage to your thyroid gland, to reverse those symptoms and halt the progression of thyroid disease. Um, stage three is when we start seeing significant damage to the thyroid gland and our body stops compensating. And that's when we start seeing some elevated thyroid markers. Stage four is when our thyroid gland has been so damaged that it's no longer able to produce thyroid hormones on its own. And at this stage, it's usually when people get diagnosed, and this is usually when um, conventional medicine intervenes by giving synthetic thyroid hormones. Um, and this is the stage, unfortunately, where we definitely will benefit from thyroid hormones. And in, in some cases, we can reverse the damage, but at that, that point, I really recommend that a person get on thyroid hormones. Stage five is actually progressive. So this is when thyroid disease progresses to another type of autoimmune condition. So going back to the question, and this was actually one of my top takeaways, is what tests do you need to do for thyroid disease? The tests that I recommend for everybody are gonna be the TSH test. This is thyroid stimulating hormone. This is gonna be one of those tests that's not gonna be elevated until stage four. In stage three, it may kind of hover, it may be anywhere from two to 10, and some doctors might say it's normal, even though a normal person without thyroid disease should have a TSH somewhere around one. Now, um, key thing to remember is the TSH may be quote unquote normal for up to 10 years after the start of thyroid disease. So the other tests you need to ask for are gonna be thyroid antibody tests. We're looking at TSI antibodies, um, TPO antibodies, and TG antibodies. And this is something you can request from your doctor. Um, should be covered by most insurances. These tests are very, very inexpensive. The key thing to remember though is that most doctors will not run those tests for you unless you have an elevated TSH, which to me is makes me wanna scream and it's sort of backwards because the TSH is gonna be normal for the first 10 years while you have these raging antibodies and you have this attack on your thyroid gland and, and oftentimes you have symptoms and you get misdiagnosed with intractable infertility or panic attacks, anxiety attacks, mental health issues. So those are the other really important tests to ask for. And then we're looking at levels of thyroid hormones in the body. So free T3 and free T4 are tests I really like to add, add to the panel because they tell us how much thyroid hormone is available within your body to interact with thyroid receptors. There's also total T3 and T4, which is great to act, great to get, but sometimes that can be deceiving because the total T3, T4 just tells us how much total of thyroid hormone we have, but we don't know if it's bound up and we don't know if it's free to interact with thyroid hormones or thyroid receptors. Then we're looking at another type of test I like to do reverse T3, and then 
For every person with thyroid disease, I like to recommend doing a thyroid ultrasound to test for and look for if you have any types of nodules on the thyroid gland to see if you have anything that might be potentially cancerous. And here's something else. Some people might not ever have thyroid antibodies. There's about 10 to 20% of people that just don't have these antibodies, and that's known as seronegative thyroid disease or seronegative Hashimoto's. And thyroid ultrasounds can actually reveal if you have damage to your thyroid gland that's consistent with um, thyroid disease. So, uh, let's see. Tanya says, just about to start selenium tonight and have magnesium glycinate in liquid form and zinc. Wonderful. So, Tanya, you must have watched The Thyroid Secret when we discussed some of the most helpful nutrients to um, help your thyroid. And so these nutrients are required for proper thyroid function. This is going to be in episode five. So I hope you dial in for that. If you're just tuning in, um, we're talking about the thyroid secrets, some of the top takeaways. I, if you can, um, if you're watching this and if you're finding it helpful, I'd love it if you share this to your timeline so that more people with thyroid disease can get access to this life-saving information. Let's see. Um, I'm going to take a sip of water here. And um, actually, this is herbal tea. And see what else you guys are asking. Um, Connie says, thank you so much for everything you're doing for those with thyroid issues. You're appreciated more than you know. Oh, thank you so much, Corrine. That really means a lot to me. Um, it's, been, it's, it's been a crazy ride the last year. As, as you know, I've been traveling around the country recording the thyroid secret and really hope that um, this information changes your lives. And actually, I know that from the 100,000 people that tuned in the first time around, we've gotten so many positive stories and so much wonderful feedback that I know that all of you guys that are just tuning in are going to love this as well.